Believe me if I told you that you can change the traffic light with a simple press of a button. This is all done from something that is on most of these traffic signal controller cabinets, and that is what we call a police access panel. So it takes a certain key that most police officers can have, which will then gain them access into this panel here, where we can use that hand control to cycle the lights themselves. We can put the intersection into flash, and we can even turn off all of the indications inside the field. It's that button, it immediately starts the cycle at this traffic intersection which is going to stop the main road and allow that side street, that one car, to go ahead and get a green light, which they can then clear through the intersection. Press the button a couple more times. The left turn lanes are going to go green now. And once we don't need the left turn lanes, which nobody is actively on, let's press the button one more time. And that's going to make the side streets go to red and also give our through lanes the green light so they can start proceeding through this intersection. Before you skip this video, just grab some popcorn because we are about to take a deep dive into this traffic signal controller cabinet where I'm going to show you exactly how this hand control button, pickle button, nurse call button, elevator button, whatever you would like to call it, actually works to control these lights and why it's so essential for police to have access to this device like this during emergency calls at a traffic intersection. So before we get into the traffic signal controller cabinet, let me tell you a little bit more about this device. So during events and emergencies at a traffic light, this button right here is going to allow officers to safely control the traffic and where they don't have to be in the middle of the intersection. But with this button, officers no longer have to be in the middle of the intersection to flag traffic. They can simply utilize the traffic lights themselves to safely control the traffic at an intersection during some type of an event or even during an emergency call, say there's an accident out here. Now, as you can see, there are some limitations to the pickle button. As you can see, it is tied to about an eight foot cord that is hooked up straight to the traffic signal controller cabinet, which may be fine at an intersection like this, but how often do you see one of these cabinets get hit by a vehicle? So we know that they are not always in the safest placement. I'm sure we can all agree that we would like our officers to be as safe as possible while they perform their daily duties. Now, while there are limitations to this device here, there is alternatives like this aerial metric wireless pickle that you can connect to the cabinet itself and then be able to wirelessly control the traffic light. So that means the officer can sit in the comfort and the safety of their own patrol car while they also control the traffic lights. So let's go ahead and open up this traffic signal controller cabinet where I can show you how this equipment and even these buttons keep everybody safe on their daily commute. So once we have this traffic signal controller cabinet open, you can see that there is a lot of equipment and it may be a little overwhelming, but let's go over what actually controls these lights. First things first, as we open up this cabinet, you can see that there are some manual controls here. This one's for a light. So let's turn that on and we'll have a little bit more light here in the cabinet. There are some extra things on the side panel. We can put the intersection into flash. We can put it in stop time, which will lock up the intersection on the approach it is currently on. We can turn the controller off turn that light on that we've already gone over and we can even place vehicle and pedestrian calls here at this traffic light. So we can end up flipping these dip switches which will then place a call on phase four allowing that approach to get a green light just in case if these cameras are not working properly to give vehicles the green lights. Now what's also inside of this traffic signal controller cabinet is obviously the controller. This is the brains of the intersection. This controls everything that goes on and happens in the field. And we have this management malfunction unit and this is going to monitor everything inside of this cabinet and everything inside the field. So if there is any kind of malfunction at the traffic light, that device is going to immediately pick it up and lock up the intersection into flash, which is going to alert a technician to come out and resolve the issue. And this right here is a multi-processor central computer unit, which is going to utilize all of the cameras out here for vehicle detection. So it's pretty much automates anything and everything that you have to do with this button. But when this guy fails, you may come out here and end up using these call switches or even the manual control to control the traffic light. And then you got other devices in here like this relay panel, which is actually tied to the railroad preemption system. So anytime that that railroad crossing is activated, this relay gets tripped, which will immediately flush out the traffic that could be on the tracks, lock up the intersection and not allow any turning traffic into the tracks themselves. And this device right here is actually what actuates the preemption 
preemption device for emergency vehicles. And no, not the cool preemption device that you've seen on my truck before, but an Opticom device where you flash a certain frequency strobe light right on some of these devices up here on the traffic lights, which will immediately give the emergency vehicles a green light. Then we have this device right here as well, and this device will probably freak some people out. And let me explain. That device inside the cabinet is connected to this antenna outside of the traffic signal controller cabinet that is actually listening for any noise created by a mobile device. So if your mobile device has Wi-Fi or Bluetooth enabled on it, it is going to get picked up by that antenna, and that device here is going to collect all the data, which is going to give real-time feedback and allow people to know just how busy the roadway is by the mobile devices themselves. We have some other cool stuff inside this cabinet, like this actuator panel here for some be prepared to stop signs. We also have this network switch, which is going to be tied to a radio for telecommunications. That white box next to the cameras is actually a radio, which is going to be used for telecommunications so that the state and city can access this traffic light remotely. So with all this equipment inside this traffic light, how do we actually get this hand control mode to work whenever we flip it from auto to hand? As you can see when we put it in hand mode this controller immediately locks up and no longer counts down and it only will when we go ahead and press this button so when we press that button you can see the yellow comes on it's turning red and it's going to cycle from phase three to phase four now nobody on the side streets now so we can currently press the button again which is going to immediately start cycling the intersection again which is going to go on approaches one and five which will be the left turn lanes on highway 90. now once those left turn lanes have cleared out we can go ahead and press the button again which it will immediately start the cycle and allow phases two and six which is Highway 90 here, the busier highway, and it will immediately give them a green light. And then once you no longer need the button anymore, you just flip the switch back into auto, which then the controller will automatically start taking control over the intersection again. Now, how is that switch and this button actually connected to the controller itself? Let me show you. That switch and the pickle button is actually connected to some of these logic cables. And a logic is pretty much just either using low voltage or a ground to complete continuity to give a little bit of a signal input to this controller. So to connect A to B, we run these logic cables all the way through the cabinet and onto this backboard where one of these pins is going to be connected to that hand and auto switch. And anytime you put it in hand, it is going to immediately lock out that controller and wait for a signal where another pin is actually going to be connected to this button itself. And anytime you press the button, it's going to connect point A to point B which is sending that signal to the controller saying, hey, we need to change the lights now. So after watching this video, I hope that you can believe me when I say that you can change these traffic lights with a simple press of a button. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out and subscribe to the Traffic Light Doctor YouTube channel where I have hundreds of videos going over the building process of these traffic light systems. And I hope that all of y'all have a safe and Merry Christmas. And as always, God bless you and thanks for watching.